Hi guys and welcome to your fourth chemistry tutorial. In this tutorial I will be dealing with uh, the chapter on chem chemical bonding. Uh, uh, guys, by far this is the easiest chapter in your course and uh, it won't take us much time to cover this chapter so uh, let's just get over with it real fast. Alright, uh, now before I start with the basic aspect of uh, chemical bonding, uh, I would want you to um, revise or recapitulate on a couple of basics. So guys, every object or every charge in the universe wants to lose energy in order to attain stability. So if I have a body, if I have myself, if I have a lot of potential energy in me, I would want to lose that energy and thereby become stable. So any atom or any in, uh, atoms which want to bond together, whatever energy they have stored in them, they would want to lose their energy and therefore become stable. Now this is a necessity uh, in the formation of a chemical bond. If those two atoms cannot lose energy, then we're sorry, but the bond is not possible. So guys, um, now let's start with um, the chapter. Um, and first things first, um, we're going to be dealing with mechanisms of chemical bonds based on the stability of atom. Uh, there are two laws, basically. The law of duplet. I'm just going to write D right now. And the law of octet. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you already know these two laws, but for those of you who don't, uh, this basically refers to uh, the gaining of stability by an atom. Now, if the atom becomes stable by having two valence electrons, by valence electrons I mean two electrons in its valence shell or in its half shell, that atom that or that particular ion will have or will testify the law of duplet. For instance, let me take an example. If you have lithium ion, which is Li plus, now lithium ion will have a stable configuration of just two. Now, as it has only two electrons in its valence or last shell, this would testify the law of duplet. On the other hand, if we look at Na+, plus, which, would have, which would have a stable configuration of 2, 8, would testify the law of octet, as it has 8 electrons in its outermost shell. Now, that's pretty much it on uh, the laws of uh, chemical bonds. Now we're going to come on to formation of ions. Now there are two types of ions, cations and anions. Cations, my friends, are positively charged, whereas anions are negatively charged. Uh, and so when an atom gives up an electron, it acquires a positive charge and thus is called a cation yeah it's called a cation otherwise for instance like a chlorine atom if it gains an electron to attain a stable configuration it acquires a minus charge and it's known as an anion so that's pretty much the difference between cations and anions now i'm going to be coming on to oxidation and reduction oxidation my friends is just simply loss of electrons so if you want uh, we could write oxidation is loss of electrons whereas reduction on the other hand is gain of electrons uh, a very easy way of remembering this um, as I think you would have already been taught by respective teachers would be oil rig For those of you who, already, who are already wondering uh, what this oil rig means, this actually means oxidation is loss 
reduction is gained. Please remember, whenever I'm talking about oxidation is loss, induction is gain, we are only referring to electrons here. Many people do confuse loss and, a loss and gain uh, of electrons to loss and gain of protons. Please, this only refers to loss and gain of electrons. So, um, this would be a very easier way of remembering um, your basics. And now, I'm going to be dealing with atoms and ions. Okay, guys. So, now we're going to go through the important differences between atoms and ions. Atoms, my friends, are electrically neutral because we know that the number of electrons in an atom equals the number of protons, and therefore, it's electrically neutral. However, in an ion, the number of electrons does not equal the number of protons. It may either be greater than the number of protons or less than the number of protons, depending on the kind of ion that it is. The second difference between an atom and an ion is that in an atom, the outermost shell may or may not have a complete duplet or octet. For instance, if I have uh, lithium, its electronic configuration is 2 comma 1. Now it does not, it does not my friend, it does not have a complete octet or duplet. On the other hand, if I look at neon, it has a complete octet but 2 comma 8. These, both of these are atoms, whereas if I have ions, if I take up any ion, all the ions have a complete duplet or octet. For instance, if I have Li+, plus, I've already gone through this, it has a stable configuration of only 2, thereby completing its duplet. And if I have uh, chlorine minus, it has a stable configuration of 2, 8, 8. There, the complete octet. So ions, my friends, will always have a complete duplet or octet, whereas atoms may not have complete duplet or octet. These two are pretty much the prominent differences between atoms and ions. Uh, let's go through the types of bonds. Now, in your syllabus, there are only three types of bonds, namely electrovalent or ionic, covalent, and coordinate bonds. Alright, so let's go over to the bonds. So guys, let's go over with the bonds. Now, ionic or electrovalent bonds are the strongest bonds out of the three. There is nothing but transfer, please remember these words, transfer of electrons. So this basically means that when two atoms come together in order to form a chemical bond, the free electrons in, by free electron mean, I mean extra electrons in one atom get completely transferred to the other atom. So if you want to take an example, you could take example of NaCl. Now, these are the most common examples. All right. So Na has one extra electron because it has an electronic configuration of 2, 8, 1, whereas Cl has a deficit of one electron as it has 2, 8, 7 configuration. Now look here guys, this electron would be transferred completely to this atom in order for Na to complete its octet and Cl to again complete its octet after gaining an electron and have a configuration of 2, 8, 8. So this way it, it works out for both Na and Cl and thus they form a very strong bond known as an ionic bond. Alright guys, so in ionic bonds that's uh, pretty much the main uh, the crux of the situation, so that's what you really want to have to learn up. 
However, there are certain properties of electrolyte compounds which I'm just gonna read out. Like they possess high melting and boiling points, they conduct electricity in only molten state or an aqueous solution. And uh, these compounds are obtained by the transference of electrons from one atom to the other, which is the main point here. And uh, these compounds are again generally soluble in water but insoluble in non polar solvents. By non polar solvents, we mean uh, solvents like benzene and ether, which do not have a high dielectric constant. Alright guys, we'll be covering the covalent and coordinate ones in the next video. Keep watching.